I do love to bring energy and joy and um, expression and emotion into always into the, the music I make and trying to energize and channel that into the musicians so that the audience can feel that too. And that's always the connection. We're always thinking about what, how are we serving our audience? What are we offering to them? And what are we bringing to their day? I'm studying here in the Netherlands on the National Master in Orchestral Conducting. And as part of that, we get classes with our teachers in The Hague and Amsterdam, but we also get to assist with all of the orchestras in the Netherlands. This week I've been assisting um, Anya Billmeyer with the Residency Orchestra and we're going to go and join her for the rehearsal. Um, they're working on Schumann and Brahms and it's really great to get to make notes and to watch the rehearsal and just to learn from Anya doing working and seeing her interact with the orchestra. When it was strings only it was great and then I think we came up again so just so I make some notes and I'm listening and I'm thinking about what's happening, what I can spot that we could improve and then at the end of the rehearsal I get a chance to chat to Anya. The colour was so good playing with two hairs of the bow. It was amazing. The winds are rushing. Still the tuning in this passage. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. And also during the week if Anya needs to have a listen in the hall I get to conduct for a bit so it's a really good chance to spend some time working with a professional orchestra. Really, I think there can be more in this melody. Ba -de -da -da. But sometimes, like, the quarter notes just sound a little bit flat. I feel really grateful over the past two years to have been able to spend so much time, particularly with this lovely orchestra here in The Hague, in their new building in Amare. A tum, 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 tum. Great. I think that's everything. It's so grounding here, kind of being connected to the earth and to the sea and um, especially on a day like this, I feel very inspired about the world around me. We're here at the beach in The Hague. This is called Schäfeninger, and it's somewhere I really like to come and get away from not just the busyness of the city, but sometimes the busyness of being a musician and conducting and actually just to take a moment. I find so much inspiration comes from just, just walking and just being here. As a kid, I was always really into music and singing and dancing. And I remember even as a, a two-year-old, I was so, so wanted to dance and to kind of perform that my parents got me into ballet classes like half a year early. Um, and actually, as I grew up and I did singing and dancing and a lot of theater, I remember my dance teacher saying, um, your arms move so well, Chloe, if only your legs <laughs> moved as well as your arms. And I always think, I wonder if that was where the conducting came from. In fact, the conducting came out of playing the flute, which I took up when I was 11. Before that, I would played the piano a bit, and I remember picking up the flute and thinking, this is so easy, it's only one line of music. So in my teenage years, I really thought I was going to go and be a flute player. I also got into music directing for musical theatre. And so I, as I got to the age of 18, I was thinking, I'm not really sure what I want to do. I know I want to do music and I know I love making music and I knew I wanted to be surrounded by people and music, but I wasn't quite sure which direction that was going to be in. And so in the end, I decided to go to university to do music um, at Oxford. And it was at Oxford I ended up getting into conducting. I found I was actually able to conduct an orchestra already, just with some of my friends. And we set up a little, a little chamber orchestra at my college. Um, and I did that and I, I remember the first rehearsal, when it finished, I just thought, wow, this is so fun. And such a good fit in a way I would have never realized until I tried it. The work snowballed ahead of me before I realized that that was what I was going to be doing with my life. It's really important that we don't go to a complete standstill. It can happen once, but it can't happen again. So what's really important, and I was saying this to the cellos yesterday, because I know you're both new, and cellos who have done this before, it's really important that you're an absolute team in the cellos and the bass, and that you keep guiding it. And also we have a lot of melody in the clarinet, I think I heard, and also in the saxophone. Listen to the melody. If you're not sure where you are, we take it from the melody. But in general, that shouldn't be necessary if the bass line keeps going. And just last thing, um, I know some of the past
Street Orchestra is a project founded with a mission to bring music to everyone, anywhere. An orchestra, which is probably one of the most complex vehicles and mechanisms that exists. I mean, it's a complete mark of human ingenuity that we're able to do something like this. When you're in a concert hall, it's such a beautiful setting to hear very clearly, but actually there is a bit of a fourth wall that's put up between the orchestra, between the musicians and the audience. Really quickly, really quick, go. Find a toilet. And actually, I think one of the best things about live music is communication. It's the fact that you're, you're impacting someone, you're, you're inspiring them, you're maybe even changing them a little bit by the music you're offering. Because we, we take down all the walls that we're up, we're in the, we're in the audience, we're talking to them, we're communicating, we're up and, and players, we're always encouraging them to make eye contact and to be communicating with their music to the audience. And we see the result of that is the audience respond back. And we actually get a feeling for how we're moving the room, how sometimes it's a bit softer and people are, are left to reflect and sometimes they are completely energised. <laughs> I just say as well, she has a real passion for people as well as music. So she really has this passion that everyone should see orchestral music and experience it. Um, and I think that's what drives her passion and her ambition. She's sort of very, really wanting people to really love what, what music is about. My family have been, I mean, A, the most amazing support system that I could have hoped for, just so supportive. And I also have a younger brother, Will, um, who is the most joyful person and um, also has special needs. Growing up, we had a very unusual but very beautiful relationship and um, he doesn't speak very much, but he has a way of communicating that goes well beyond words. And um, I find his purity and his joy and love of life one of the most inspiring things I've ever encountered. I see his joy in music and the way he responds to music is so raw and very open. I, I'm always very inspired and, and I want to be more like him in that way. We have a wonderful relationship and we, we communicate a lot through songs and through... Um, he has this amazing ear and he can remember phrases and not just the phrase but the intonation of the phrase. And so often if we're um, going out somewhere, I'll create a little story based on a song or farms are the perfect example because there are all, all sorts of songs about animals. Um, and he also loves music and he loves, um, we go to church on a Sunday and he loves the music there. That's a really powerful thing. I think we live in an amazing time at the moment actually and um, we're really at the cutting edge of where classical music's going and where leadership's going too and to be a conductor in this age where we're seeing the, the model for leadership shifting and away from being um, kind of one person who's in control and sets the rules into a much more collaborative approach and even beyond a collaborative collaborative approach where the conductor is one amongst equals. Um, and that's, that's such an exciting, exciting task in a way to create a space where you are simply collaborating with what the musicians are giving and you're trying to enable them. It's easier for one person to make a decision but actually that's not the most fruitful and not the most vibrant way of making music because you're not taking the best of what you have on offer. I know when I walk into a room that I'm not the person with the best ideas or even the best musicianship but I come with an open hand with what I love about the music and I know that everyone in the room has their own loves. When an audience comes in, they've come from their, their days, they've come from bad days, good days, challenging days, families. But something changes in that moment because they are inspired and the orchestra is a hyper co communicative, hyper interactive vessel that sort of projects communication and, and energy and um, light often into, into what can be a dark world. I definitely don't want that to become just about me when I'm conducting. I, what I want is to be a part of that communicative vessel and, and, and see the transformation, the change that that can bring. I really think because of that ability music has to change people a little bit, it has, it has the chance to change bigger things, to change communities. And um, that's something we really need in the world right now.
that's my time up. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>